Having seen how key migration works in data modeling as well as how it is achieved in Oracle Data Modeler, let's move on to a different topic, that of naming relationships. Now till now we have sort of assumed that we understand the meaning of every relationship. That is because we took examples that were common sense examples and we actually knew what the relationship meant. That may not always be the case, especially when you're drawing a data model, creating a data model for a situation that you're unfamiliar with. Right then, just showing the entity types and just drawing the lines between them may not completely make sense. Take a look at this example here. We've got two entity types, team and player, and suddenly we see that there are two relationships that are shown between team and player. Now one may wonder, what are these two relationships? We understand one relationship, a team can have many players. What's the other one doing there? Right? To clarify, we may actually need to name the relationships so that somebody looking at the diagram can make sense of what the diagram is talking about. Right? So now you can see that I've given a name to each of the relationship. Uh, relationships, in fact two names, and so from this you can see that let's take a look at the bottom relationship first. A team may be composed of many players, one or many players, and a player may be on one team. Okay, so this bottom relationship is talking about a player being a member of a team. Okay, in fact, we could have called this member of team, member on team, or player on team. We could have given it many different ways, uh, many different uh, names, but we've just chosen the simple one. The top relationship shows the relationship between teams and players where players are captain of a team. Okay, so the team must be led by one player who is the captain of the team, and a player may be captain of one team. Okay, it's a it's a one-to-one -one relationship, so both sides is one. Okay, notice how I'm using the term must be and might be. Must be if the line is solid, which means they must participate in the relationship. Might be if the line is dashed, so it's optional. Okay, so let's take a look at this in, in slightly greater detail. Now that we have the idea that relationships can be named to give much more meaning on entity relationship diagrams. Okay, so let's see how to read a relationship. First of all, given a diagram that has relationships, how do you read them? You can read the relationships in a very mechanical sort of way. Okay, so let's look at a relationship, of course, can be read reading from the left or the right. There are two different ways in which you can read the relationship. Okay, so let's first start reading from the left. So we always say start the sentence with each and then first thing we encounter is the entity type. So put the name of the entity type, each player and then we see a dashed line here. So then we say might be because it's a dashed line, right? Might be or must be. Solid line would be must be, might be is a dashed line. So that is the player might participate, might not participate, right? And then we encounter the name of the relationship captain of, right? And then we skip right over to the cardinality notation here, one, because there's no crow foot, then we say T. Okay, so that is how you read the relationship from the left. And in fact, notice how just from the diagram, you can create automatically, mechanically, a computer can create more or less an English-like sentence. Each player might be captain of one team. Okay, and so we just started with each, then put the name of this entity type and saw if this line is dashed or solid, put might be because it was dashed and then took the name of the relationship as we had, as we had it. And then we ignored this line and this relationship because that, the, the name, because that applies to reading from the other side. And then we looked at the cardinality notation here. Since there was no crow foot, we just said one and we just put the name of this entity type. Okay. So the, the naming, the way we do it, actually implies a lot of meaning. Let's try to read it from the right. Okay, so again, we start with each. This time we put the name of the entity type here, team. 
and since this is a solid line we say must be led by this is no crow foot one player okay so that is how we get the uh, we read entity relationship diagrams on which we've got relationship names these are very important because when you're looking at an unfamiliar situation the lines simply don't make sense as they do in familiar situations so you have to put the names on it so that it's easy for somebody looking at it to understand in fact it's easy for you looking at it later on to understand as well okay so here let's look at another example here so reading from the left each player might be because it's a dashed line right each player might be dashed line on and no crowfoot one team reading from the right each team might be dashed line composed of name of the relationship and when you see a crowfoot you say one or more so one or more players and because it's more we don't just put the name of the entity type we put the plural of it players okay so that is how you read the relationships both forwards and backwards so given a diagram with relationships we understand how to read it so let's take a look at our guideline for naming relationships we already know how to read relationships so now the way in which we name relationships would be to fill in the names in such a way that the sentence that we uh, we arrive at makes sense right so for example the way to read the relationship here would be like this each x we already know that and then depending on the line it must be or might be depending on whether this line is solid or dashed then we say uh, this is solid or dashed on the left hand side then we just include whatever the name of the relationship is as it is and then we say depending on whether this is a crow foot or not we say one or uh, many or one depending on whether there is a crow foot or not if there is a crow foot you say one or many there is no crow foot you say one and then you just put the other entity type either you say y or y's okay here we've got two entity types x and y and the way to read it is like this now the way to name relationships is simply the same thing except that you give the names to the relationship such that this sentence reads nicely that's all okay if somebody following the rule can construct this sentence and the sentence comes out nice then that's the correct way to name the relationship okay so having looked at okay now that you have seen how to read relationships try constructing the corresponding sentences for the relationship on relationships on this diagram as usual when it's your turn pause the video write out all your answers and then come and look continue the video and see how your answers match up to those that i have given okay so pause the video now okay i assume that you have made a sincere attempt at reading these relationships let's see what could be possible solutions i'm first looking at the first relationship customer and car each customer must be solid line owner of name of the relationship crow foot one or many cars okay so i hope you got that let's look at the next one reading it the other way each car must be solid line property of relationship name one customer because there is no crow foot okay so those two sentences correspond to these two relationships here reading left and right now let's look at this each car must be solid line covered by name of the relationship one policy because there is no crow foot each policy must be the cover for one or more cars again must be because it's solid one or more because of the crow foot now let's look at the last two relationships each payment must be must be 
solid line for one policy. Each policy might be the target of one or more payments. One or more because of Crowfoot might be because of the so dash line target of because that's the name of the relationship okay so you can see how the entity relationship diagram actually communicates a lot of business rules and important information okay so now given a relationship try to find suitable names for the relationship this might be tricky because you have to go back and take a look at our how you read the relationship so that you can then put a proper name that completes the sentence correctly. Again, pause the video and take a shot at it. Try to give names. So you're going to say each building may be, and then you're going to give the name of the relationship and then say something, many rooms, right? So each building may be what of many rooms? Any because this is uh, Crowfoot, right? So each building maybe or might be dash many rooms each building might be dash many rooms or one or many rooms so what is the dash fill in the dash appropriately and again we may say each room must be dash one building okay so try to fill in those two blanks One possible answer is each building might be the container of one or many rooms. Each room must be part of one building. Okay, that's one way to fill in those two blanks. Another example. So again, try to create the relationship names. Pause the video and continue later. So I think this is possible. Each course might be the subject of one or many sections. Each section must be of one course. Each section must be taught by one instructor. Each instructor might be the teacher for one or many sections. Okay, so you could name the relationships like this. 